You got your mask. You are really saying it. Where? So what is your point? What is your point? What is your point? Uh, this thing. Hold up. Tell. See, breach of privilege is necessary for the discharge of uh, an elected members. Are just now you were singing a different tune. You were no, defending no, but, our rights. But what I'm saying is, uh, although it is not codified, you know, it cannot be misused to it stain. Can be and to it is stain. It has. It is being. Okay. It, if it has been, then there is a committee set up before it uh, is held before see uh, he's joking or serious he's joking. Seekingly, jokingly serious take out take out earlier recording where is where is what 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 we soon find this on youtube maybe so carry on carry on carry on don't feel shy man see, don't I'm give us the official look, version look, just look. because you were giving us big talk just now which of privilege is when you make sweeping statements like when you say all mlas are corrupt but um, if you make if you make, if you make a uh, if you make a statement about a particular certain MLA, only one MLA, with proof and evidence, we have evidence that X was uh, the police have charged X for uh, factual, 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 factual but if it's opinion, if it's factual, opinion. don't mix your opinion. You make a factual statement, then according to me, it is not breach of privilege. But if you make sweeping allegations against all MLAs, all MPs. Then 100 percent it's a no. I am reporting something which has been said against one MLA. Now that MLA will contend that we are blocking his functioning in the house. Mm. What is your opinion on this? No, no. What is the question that he is? He is uh, that I am making a report on what someone has said about him. Maybe in, in the, the house, house itself. In the house. In itself. the house, you you if have you report you full right. what is yeah. being said in the house. Then it is you are covered by absolute privilege. Yeah, privilege. Which you means have the privilege. that you cannot be sued for defamation unless. The speaker of the house has expunged the remark. If it is, a, if the speaker has expunged the remark, correct, then you can. That is definitely 100% breach of privilege. Okay. Generalists can defend. Okay. Regard See, yeah, 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 one second. Not legal. The word is devil. The word is defend. Because as I am a PhD in media law, I respond to this. Uh, See, for example, parliament. And uh, the legislature is deemed to be on par with the courts. They are separate but equal. Okay. Now it's a basic principle of law that before you convict somebody, you have to give him or her a chance of being heard. So you will be called and asked to uh, give your worship. When you ask to give your worship, you give your worship and start off by saying that if I have caused any un uh, unintended uh, uh, injury okay. to anybody, I humbly and respectfully submit my and then you uh, give your version of what has been stated. Now this will be examined by a committee of the uh, honourable MLAs or MPs or whatever. And then they will decide whether a breach of privilege has actually been committed or not. Since, so since there is no definition, no, no, it's not, no codification. Can I put my mask back? No, 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 no codification. Isn't it a problem that they have unlimited yeah, power? Yeah. This is a chapter in my, was my chapter in my PhD thesis. Actually, there is no codification, and according to me, if I if I am right in making a guess, it never will be. What was your what was the thesis about? My my PhD thesis was titled Lacunae in Law of the Press in India. Lacunae so, in Law of the Press in India, that is dissecting the press law with respect to the print media only. Which era? Covering. <laughs> I got my PhD degree in the year 1998 from Mumbai University. Yeah. It was deemed to be a one of the best thesis to come out at that time. So it was uh, pinpointing the defects which affect media journalists. Covered, print media, covered the, print the period media. long for how many years? See, law that? is law. Okay, yeah. there's no period as such. Because when you enact Contempt of Courts Act, it is enacted in 1971. Or defamation, section 499-500 of the IPC. Or uh, many others, like Press and Registration of Books Act. Yeah. Then. Uh, Privileges of Parliament, etc., etc. There's no period as such. But any well, case studies, any case studies that you looked at? Or? Many case studies, more than 500, 800 case studies. From, from all across the from country. different sources. Different made, states. Sorry. Different states or mostly. Different states. states. I had made trips to uh, Delhi, at least eight to ten trips. So I made trips to the Supreme Court. I made use of their library. Then I went to the other libraries, National Law School of Indian University at Bangalore, and uh, many libraries. Now it's more than 25 years back. I went to about visited at least about eight to ten libraries, collected and collated all the case studies. My journalists were. Which was the most interesting cases? Anything you recall offhand? Yeah. Okay. Contempt of court. For example, in contempt of court. Okay. Like um, it was laid down that truth is no defense in a contempt of court. Truth is no defense. Yeah. Yeah. It was laid down simply because 
um, Madhav Gittari of the Lok Sattha. He published a story when he was the editor. I think it was in the Lok Sattha that he gave three cases. For example, number one, that uh, there was a judge of the High Court. We will continue outside. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. There was a judge of the Honorable, uh, yeah. uh, honorable Judge of the Bombay High Court yeah. who used to take off his hearing aids. Yeah. Okay, and uh, then the lawyers would keep on arguing. Now, um, there was a second case where he gave an uh, example of an, at least there was a uh, judge of the Bombay High Court who was impressed by one particular lady advocate. And the third example he gave was of the uh, Motor Accidents Claims Tribunal. Now, this was produced before the High Court and they deemed it tender. It went from bench to bench I see. because the benches were not willing to hear it. And ultimately, there was a bench headed by Justice, the one um, uh, Justice, I forget the name, but two uh, division bench. Yeah. And they said, yes, it is contempt of court. So the, you know, the uh, Mr. Ram Jitmalani appeared for the editor. And he offered to leave evidence to show that what yeah. the editor said was correct. But the bench said nothing wow. going. We can't allow you to lead or oh prove gosh. the justification of this because then this will expose the judiciary to contempt and duty. So it was held that truth is not a defence when you get an Very action of contempt of court. Very interesting. But this was set aside in 2006 when Parliament amended the Contempt of Court Act, and later truth on, that truth defense. can be our defence. Can be in contempt of court. Thanks. Thank My you. pleasure. Okay.